Assalamu alaikum brothers and sisters. So Child With My Bite is back and alhamdulillah this time season 3 is going to be available on the podcast app both on Android and Apple devices. So if you're on either of those you can click the link below inshallah subscribe to the podcast. I promise you you're not going to want to miss it and now it's accessible for you wherever you are. If you're on the train you can listen to it with your headphones in or you've got airpods, beats, whatever headphones you have inshallah you can listen to it wherever you are whenever you are inshallah. And if you're watching on YouTube as always just remember you can watch the video uh, and all the previous episodes from the last two seasons are available on YouTube. If you go to the playlist on Nasiha Session, uh, the YouTube channel, if you go to the playlist, it's called Chai with Mabai. You can find all the previous episodes there. And inshallah, from now on, all the future episodes on the podcast app. Peace. Assalamu alaikum. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah, amma ba'd. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu, brothers and sisters. Chai with my bai is back, alhamdulillah. We're here with the same panel as usual, we've got Strides, Guled, Sa'ad and Imran. Guys, give salam. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. So alhamdulillah, we're back. Now, let's not get into too much of, you know, where we've been and why we've been away. Let's get straight into the topic for today, which... You know, it's a topic that I've been myself wanting to ask, you know, for a long time. And, you know, hopefully, inshallah, we can get a little bit more light <gasps> on this topic today. And that is the issue of, obviously, we had the year of refutations. So it was 2016, right? 2016 started off with the Mawlid Imam. Then it went to uh, Yasir Qadi, he got refuted. And I think, um, you know, there's a whole bunch of people that were bought into that video towards the end. Then you had the issue of uh, Dr. Haytham al-Haddad, the alcohol video, the you know voting video, so on and so forth. There were a couple of YouTubers as well that we had to refute on the way. Wait, long story short. Did we not do a video about this? Where we talked about the refutation, yeah. And then I, to be honest, I get flashbacks that we did. We, I don't we, think we, we did. did. Something like that. Something yeah. like this. I don't remember anyway. But Either way, I want to talk about it now. I want to talk about it right now. So let's talk about it. So the thing I want to mention is obviously at that time there were a lot of people who have you know voicing their opinions about you know you guys and your da'wah and everything and um, one of the key things was you guys are never going to succeed in your da'wah you guys are claiming that you're trying to reach the youth and you're doing things to you know appeal to the youth but the way you guys are going you're just dividing the ummah you know tawheed is dividing the ummah <laughs> the sunnah is dividing the ummah so you know your rhetoric divides the ummah so you guys are never going to reach that unity that you guys are trying to get to, you know, upon the Quran and the Sunnah or whatever. And the numbers will never come to you. The youth will, will run away from you. Uh, and just watch <laughs> time will tell. That's what was said. So I think it's safe to say that time has happened, if that makes sense. <laughs> time will tell. I think the time part has happened. So what's there to tell? That's my <coughs> question. Has it been the case that everyone ran away and that Tawheed and Aqidah scared everyone away and that wasn't what people wanted or... Has it been otherwise? Who wants to go in first, inshallah? No one? Okay, strides, you go first. I choose you. I summon you. Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah amma ba'd. You know what? Um, I think everyone has run away. <coughs> huh? Everyone has run away. <laughs> we have a plot test, didn't it? Okay, go on, <laughs> explain. I think he means the ikhwan is <laughs> run away. As in everyone ran away from... The wrong people to, inshallah, <laughs> the right people. Oh, okay. okay, you mean you as in understand? they? Okay, okay, I'll yeah, get. I'll get what you mean. got a bit excited for a second. <laughs> thinking, yes, we captured strides. <laughs> they didn't capture me, don't worry. I didn't run away today. The only people like you and Abu Tamia, you know, they 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 still try it with you. You know that, right? What do you mean? They still think there's hope. Who's they? Who's they? Who's they? The Ikhwanis, isn't it? Who's the Ikhwanis? There's people no way. Is, there's <laughs> those those those. those you hate bro me, bro. Huh? By the way, yeah, I just wanted to mention something. Yeah, I don't know if you've ever seen this. You know that video. Um, when you're in the masjid and you're saying um, um, when you're saying shut up basically yeah they made a music uh, <coughs> video yeah I saw it, I saw it. I, I, they had my face <laughs> <laughs> I saw it, I saw it, I saw it. <laughs> they, put, they made it by him sir. yeah it's a video about you right where they basically made uh, was it Stormzy or something? I don't yeah. know. They basically made a version of your. Sh- yeah, your sh- you saying Sad, you know. I've laid off. Listen, he's, he's on an episode. Okay. Coming okay. back to the topic, inshallah. Yeah, he's, he's quite sick today. So the point, the point I was making was that out of all people that they actually point the video of the new was him. <laughs> That's what it is. In, in that video, he's, he's in the video though, right? You know the thing about strides oh, is yeah. so miskin. He's in the video. He's the one where he the, hits the, the table when he the, jumps. The thing about strides is so miskin. Yeah, one second. <laughs> We're having some uh, t- technical difficulties. We're taking an uh, interval. We'll be back shortly, inshallah.
So anyway, Gullet, you tell me, how, what's your perception? In fact, you haven't even been about. And in fact, you're leaving soon anyway. So I've been about, I've been about, alhamdulillah. Um, what was the question again? I'm <laughs> playing, <laughs> I'm playing. Uh, no, what was the question? What are you asking? Okay, so in terms of the da'wah, <laughs> how has it been progressing in terms of oh. numbers? No, uh, numbers. First and foremost, are numbers something that you use to measure your success when it comes to the deen? No, they're not. Why not? Because that's not the way that the Prophet Sallam came and taught to his companions. It wasn't about numbers. And like as we know, the hadith like were... <laughs> exactly. Not only that, there will be prophets that will come on the day of judgment. Some of them will have a large amount. Some of them will have okay amount. Some of them will have one. Some of them will have none. So was their message incorrect? Did they come with falsehood or, or, or something that people didn't accept? So it's not based on numbers. <coughs> um, so no, numbers are not something to to say this is correct or this is this is uh what do you call it a thing that we use to measure if if I just add <coughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala actually said in the Quran that mm. numbers are could actually potentially be an indication of misguidance mm. because Allah said in man fil ardi an sabilillah. Mm. if you follow the majority of people on the earth they will misguide you <coughs> that's as clear Allah Azza wa said the majority if you follow them you'll be misguided Allah said Akhtaruhum La but just like as a general rule though is it not like rational <coughs> no, to assume if you look at as well now mm. speaking to the mic majority <laughs> now major majority now especially live in the uk are not doing good so if we follow majority we look at numbers then you know majority of people are not believers majority of people you know are are drinking majority of people are involved in x y z so if we look at these things as as um what do you call it a scale then definitely, as the brother mentioned in the eye, that we'll definitely <laughs> be involved in corruption. We'll, we'll definitely be. So numbers are not no, but numbers are something that Allah gives it to whoever He wills. You know, so at the times the Muslims were little at the beginning, and then later on they became the majority, and they were the most. You see what I'm saying? So I think the point you're trying to make is that in numbers in and within itself, yeah, is not, like not a sign of sign. good nor a sign of a bad. Mm. Not, not <coughs> a sign of bad. Because if you, if you do have m numbers, it's not like, oh, just because the person got numbers, you think you assume that the person's upon misguidance. No. Numbers can be a sign of good or they can be a sign of bad. But there's no foundation. If, if, there's any, if, if, if there is a default position, though, for having a majority, then that actually leans towards more misguidance because of the ayah that I just mentioned. Does so basically, you can't basically put <coughs> a, uh, a ruling on someone just based on the amount of numbers no, of people that they no, have. No, definitely. Basically. Right. Okay. No. But you That's you know, in, 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 in this situation whereby... Um, what was said is that you lot don't bring the numbers and no one's going to go to you if you speak about Aqeedah. I think maybe it's a bit different because now we're, we're, what we're doing is showing that, okay, you lot said that there was not going to be numbers. Oh, of but course. So that's of the next course. question. So then in terms of numbers, what's happened with with uh, Matting in the Masjid, with Knowledge College? How like, have the numbers like, changed? Like, like you said, the, <coughs> the, like actually, you actually put it quite eloquently. The people actually ran away from the Ikhanis. If you look a lot of the, and I'm not going to mention them anymore because once upon a time I would mention these institutes by name because they were famous and they were known. But now we actually are in a time and a place where these institutes are not even known. But us actually mention them will be given them popularity. So I'm not even going to mention them by name. But there's one particular institute which we have in the past refuted because of their deviance and their misguidance. And they're actually closing down around the country. They, I, think, I, think we, I think they just closed, I, I, if I'm not mistaken, they just closed down or, or they're in the process of closing down uh, their, their spot in Birmingham. They've closed it down in many places around the north, in the Midlands. And um, inshallah, soon they'll be closing it down in London as well. Of inshallah. course, <laughs> going back to the principle you mentioned earlier, just because they're reducing the numbers mm. doesn't mean necessarily that they're promised you're right, you're right, you're right. Uh, but the thing is here, you see, you asked a question to Gulad at the beginning, which was that, our numbers are a way to measure truth, basically. <coughs> Does that make sense? So yep. for us, the numbers will never been a way to measure truth. But the mm, only reason yeah. we're mentioning our numbers right now... For other people, it was a way yeah. of measuring the truth. I think numbers are so important now, especially the time we're in where you have social media, where numbers count, followers. So the more numbers you have... The more people you can reach. Exactly, subscribers and uh, followers and, and these kind of things. Is, is so that, if your numbers are high then what do you <coughs> call it F like you're popular or, or something yeah, yeah. something positive must be going your way if your numbers are low then it's for a reason like you know people will follow uh -huh. you because of you doing so people looked at numbers from that angle because they were like oh look this person's got x amount a hundred thousand two hundred thousand yep. a million so numbers became important from that aspect and then when those numbers came in 
Uh, I mean, <coughs> obviously with numbers comes money because these platforms now look at you and let's say, look, you're bringing in about X amount, which before it used to be TV, certain you know programs or certain channels people used to watch. And so advertisements or X, Y, Z used to come <coughs> because of the numbers. Now you as a platform are bringing these numbers. So me as a company, I'll use your platform that mm. you've built. And so now it's become a means <coughs> of revenue yeah, for people. Yeah. So what they're posting now or what, what they could be posting online via these platforms. Is to try and get more views so that they get more revenue. more revenue. Because that's what it comes And you actually see this. You actually see this. You see ads. Like you click on a video that's a Quran recitation. Yeah. And because they've uh, you know, monetized it, the ads <laughs> that come up, it's music. There's half naked women. And you clicked on it to get your iman higher. You know, you've gone yeah, there because yeah. you're feeling low. You know what? I want to listen to some Ra'ad al Kardi or, you know, I want to listen yeah. to, you know, some Idris Abkari. You clicked on the video. And before you know it, like, it's like some groovy yeah, jam. Yeah, like, yeah, like yeah, like so I mean, yeah. even now, like, so, so, uh, sorry, like, now you see, you know, these um, Khwanis, they actually got their own ads. So now, if you click on certain <coughs> videos, you actually see them pop up. Oh, on advertisements? Yeah, it's, it's, it's mad, man. I'll be honest with you, I'd rather see a Khwani ad than a half naked woman dancing with music. So, in a way, uh, let's go to you. Uh, no, I'd, I'd, no, I'd rather. Uh, you'd rather see half naked woman? No, 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 no. Don't, don't put words in my mouth. I'm not going to see no <laughs> okay. half naked woman, but I'm saying by that statement, it could make it seem like you're belittling bid'ah. No, not at all. I'm no. talking about looking at. But looking at Nikhwani no, is different I'm saying to I'd rather not listen to both because I, I, even hearing both them, goes into hearing, the fire remember, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. remember uh, Ibn Abbas anhum, said that whoever lends his ear to an innovator to a person with bid'ah he's left the shelter of Allah okay, sorry, I was, okay let me rephrase that I was talking more from the angle of seeing forget the music side of it I'd rather look at Nikhwani than look at half naked woman that's what I meant let me, let me no, for me I'm not trying to look at none of them <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> shall, 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 shall I quickly say something as well yeah yeah can I say it? Because more time the Ikhwani and his Adi probably got a woman in the background anyway. <laughs> and they do. Oh yeah, these days, just and they do. Can I quit this? Yeah, yeah, go on. Because I keep yeah. coughing. <laughs> and it's going to become difficult for me to say. Just basically, water, yeah. Huh? Yeah, that's no, mine. That's mine. That's mine. No, yeah, yeah, I'm sick, don't worry. I'm joking. I'm joking. Oh, <laughs> no, no, I'm really joking. I'm basically, joking. Um, no, just because obviously we're, we're, we're looking at the situation from the angle of numbers, right? But to be honest, I don't really think that's something that we need to even tackle or talk about because. We're, we're kind of surpassed the issue of numbers. I feel like the real issue that we were dealing with was this concept of people saying that we don't know the youth of today mm. and we're not able to address them. We're not able to, you know, understand what kind of life they're living. We're stuck in our own bubbles yeah. and we no, can't. That, that, that came because that came under the like, saying, oh, you're. I, I know, uh, but I'm, I'm saying now, I know, I'm saying now we're, we, we've surpassed the issue of numbers now because everything we do majority of the work is related to the youth anyway right so if it was the case that you, uh, when you say surpassed when you say surpassed, num surpassed numbers you mean as in as in we already got the numbers no need to talk yeah, about numbers we don't even, we don't do, do you be honest yeah, even before they came out we, that's we don't saying, have numbers that's what I'm saying was numbers was never an issue 700, mm. you have people. to understand I'm saying numbers no 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 but that was before no, the reputation no, started no. even bro no, when no, we no, used no, to no, have no, um, no. Uh, no, what, right, when we used to do stuff like yeah Wortley these are talking about 800, 900 people bro give an example I'm so sorry for example when we had the Aleppo event right it was after the refutation of um, uh, Dr. Haytham al Haddad, uh -huh. Qadi. We had packed out every packed time. Out, yeah, yeah. If it was a case of numbers, then numbers were. I agree, it was packed out, but there. not to the same level as the Awuna has come, the Aliban event. I know, but uh, that you could the, argue that, that he was a little exactly, bit, uh, you yeah, know, he was relevant at that time. time and and mm -hmm. A lot of people, yeah, my love, mercy. But I'm saying, I'm saying, we don't even need to talk about numbers anymore mm. because I feel like one of the biggest things that the, these people were targeting us was from the, uh, from the fact that we don't know people. Uh -huh. you know we don't know the people that we're calling to we're in our own little bubbles we don't understand people are going through issues of zina and this and that and we're trying to teach them about bid'ah how can you talk to people about bid'ah when somebody's suffering uh -huh. from drugs uh -huh. when in reality is that camera recording yeah just have a look yeah both recording yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. no I'm talking that one there are you sure yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, wait, calm. 14 minutes so I'm like now when you look at our work it's majority of it is all related to the youth uh -huh. and it's all based upon this notion of talking about Tawheed, Bid'ah, Ma'asi, all of it put together, a da'wah to Salafiyyah and it hasn't made anyone run away. Okay. I don't know mm -hmm. anyone particularly that has said, you know, I can't be with these guys or this da'wah is killing me or it's too much for me or etc. Does that make sense? Yeah. Mm -hmm. so right, let me ask you guys a question now. Yeah, cause let's, so let's move on. I agree. Let's move on from this issue of numbers. Yeah, but let me ask you guys a question now. So obviously, <coughs> you guys or you know what the group or whatever have been teaching Tawheed for example mm -hmm. you know the issue of Tawheed, La ilaha illallah, the Shahada for 
a very, very long time now, right? Like even for example, last year, you guys are studying the Deen, and a lot of that is based on Tawheed. And now again, this year you taught the same book, and I'm teaching more books. Like, why is it needed to go so deep into something so basic? Like, all you need to know is Allah is one, <coughs> Tawheed, worship Him alone, the Shahada. Like, there's not that much to it. Why is it that you're just banging on about the same thing again and again and again and again? I mean, like, it's something which is so simple. Like, everyone understands yeah, it, right? No, Every Muslim I, knows I, Tawheed, I, no? I, I very much disagree. I don't. The, the Muslims do not have a grounded yeah. understanding of Tawheed. But even if they did, even if they did Abu Bakr, you still have to talk about it. And I just mentioned, no, I mentioned two, no. two, I mentioned two narrations to you to, oh, yeah. to drive the point home. Okay. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi said, "La taqumu sa'a hatta tatariba aliyat nisa dos ala." The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that the hour will not strike until the women from the tribe of Dos move their hips around worshipping the idol called Dhu Khalasa. Now Dhu Khalasa was an idol at the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was an idol at the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam which he ordered for it to be destroyed in his time, right? Okay. But that idol will be once again erected okay. and the idol will be worshipped again. Okay. Why? Why? Ibn Taymiyyah rahmanullah ta'ala says because people stop talking about la ilaha illallah. There's another narration <coughs> by Hudayfa radiallahu anhu where he said that, the, that there will be a time where the people will say our forefathers used to say something called la ilaha illallah. They won't even say it themselves. They won't even know what it means. They'll just say yeah there was something that our dad's dad's dad used to say. It was la ilaha illallah. Again, Shaykh al Ibn Taymiyyah rahmanullah ta'ala explained how did this situation arise because people they started to think <coughs> to themselves hey you know what? You know, we know la ilaha illallah. There's no point discussing it. Not only that, this is enough of a proof. Is there anyone who knew la ilaha illallah more than the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam? No. It in Surah Muhammad, in Medina, thirteen plus years after the Prophet sallallahu alaihi became so the no, messenger no. of Allah azza wa jal, Allah commanded him, "Fa'alam annahu la ilaha illallah wa li dhanbik." Allah said, "Have knowledge, O Muhammad." Allah, Allah didn't say fa'alamu. He didn't say all of you. No, He said, "You, you Muhammad, you Muhammad, <coughs> sallallahu alaihi wasallam, you have knowledge of la ilaha illallah. You keep studying it. You keep educating yourself upon it." Does that make sense? No, I agree. I agree. But like, for example, Gulid, like, for, let's say, for example, you be studying for, let's just say, argument sake, five years, yeah, and you're still studying till he told his day, right? And of you're course. studying it all the way through. Don't you ever feel like? What's next? Like this again? Not getting boring, but like, yeah. what's next? Like, I need yeah. to move on now. Why? Why am I still learning that, the same thing? Uh, that would make sense. Like, from the angle, if you look at the story of Ibrahim, Ali Salam, what's he known for? Like, you got to talk a bit more. Like he, what's he known for? That like he fought against Shirk. Yes. Millet Destroyed Ibrahim. the idols and. So he's known for that. Even Ibrahim, after all of that, he seeks refuge from Allah. To say, Oh Allah, don't make me and my family worship idols. The simple form. Bring any, any, anyone. Put idol in front of him. He said, "Oh, come on, I, I, I know that. Like, that's the simplest form." But after all of what he went through <coughs> with his people and everything, Ibrahim, he still makes that du'a saying, "You know, Allah say from worshiping idols, me and my family." Sure. So, it's not something to be, be belittled in that sense of like, "Oh, you know what? Five <coughs> years, yeah, six years, and then put it in the bag." Oh, it's, it's like it's forever, man. Should I also say something? Yeah, you know, a lot of people who come with this notion. <coughs> it's because they really haven't understood Tawheed. Mm. Because if you actually understood, uh, understand Tawheed, the fact of the matter is everything that happens in your life can always be brought back to it. Do you understand? An aspect of Tawheed. So when people come and say, oh, you lot are always talking about Aqidah and Tawheed, how is this going to benefit the people? How is it relevant? The only reason they're saying that is because they don't understand what Tawheed really is. Mm -hmm. Because if a person was to really understand what Tawheed is, you can apply that to any aspect of your life sort of <coughs> a person's going through difficulties a person's going through trouble in his life all of that can be related back to Tawheed I'll give an example of that yeah I'll give, I'll give an example of Go that on. I'll give an example of that yeah I was in the masjid yeah and I was in a Jummah khutbah yeah and mm -hmm. the imam said something crazy so obviously recently we, 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 we know about the knife crime and the killing and whatnot obviously we've been at the forefront of that da'wah but this imam, he comes onto the member on Friday and he starts saying, you know what, we need to do something about the kids. The kids are killing each other. You Muslims, you know, uh, Muslims are the biggest problem of the Muslims. You know, uh, you're all in the masjid talking about theological issues, meaning what? Aqidah, Tawheed, Manhaj. You're talking about these uh, theological issues. <coughs> they have no bearing in the outside world. You don't know what the kids are going through. I'm not going to lie, it really upset me when he said that. You know why? Because we know the solution towards what these kids are suffering is what? Is Tawheed uh -huh. That's really what you're asking How And I'm going to explain it to you right now yeah. So I went down to him After the Salah I remember I went downstairs I saw Gulid <laughs> coming out Gulid looked stressed I know he heard it as well I know me and him Were thinking the exact same thing 
certain bro, did you hear the khutbah? He said, yo, I'm not going to lie, that was a bit mad. You don't ask him which message this was or you don't want to mention it? Oh, let's not mention it. Bro. Okay. So basically, I was like, bro, I'm going to go talk to the imam. He's like, no. I was like, no, no, don't worry, don't worry. It's not going to be like that. So I just went, I spoke to him, I chatted to him. Sit down and I speak to the imam. And I must have said to him, I, of course, I didn't want to come across like I was, you know, being disrespectful. And, you know, obviously he's the imam of the message. You don't want to insult him in front of his own community or anything like that. You don't want to feel like he's insulted. So I just went up to him and I just said, look, I just uh, introduced <coughs> myself. I said, look, uh, you may not know, but I said, uh, myself and my team are at the forefront of working with kids on the streets, specifically kids with, 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 you know, knife crime and drug crime and all that. And alhamdulillah, our events are packed out with those particular kids. Like you can come to our event and you know that these kids are really struggling living that kind of life so we're at the forefront of this you know we've had brothers that we've buried because we've lost them in the last year to this life of crime we've had brothers that we've buried we're brothers in jail we are brothers who are left <coughs> that life are completely changed so i said it's safe to say and i say this and i'm not boasting here in any way shape or form i'll be honest i don't feel any shyness i don't feel any way saying this but i believe that us as a team are experts from the Muslim community when it comes to kids on the streets. I was positioning myself and I said, I'm, 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 I'm an expert when it comes to these kids, the ones that you're talking about. Does that make sense? And I just want to mention to you that I agree with what you said when you said that the biggest problem of the Muslims is the Muslims. But okay. for me, the Muslims that I believe are the biggest problem are the innovators, the people of Bid'ah. They are that you're, you're, you're belittling it, saying, Stop talking about bid'ah, stop refuting bid'ah because the kids on the streets are stabbing each other. What does bid'ah have to do with them? I said, I'm telling you that there is a direct in correlation between bid'ah and what these kids are going through. So you go to me, So, how did the innovators, how did the people of bid'ah affect you in your da'wah? I said, I'll tell you how. I said, You know, we have the murji'ah. Murji'ah is a group which is a from the deviated sects that will enter the hellfire that believes that Iman <coughs> is basically just in your heart. Okay. It's not on the limbs okay. And as long as you know Allah in your heart You're saved okay. right? Of course if that's the case And that means Iblis Shaitan is saved as well Because Shaitan He knew Allah Azza wa Jalla in his heart In fact he makes dua to Allah He said Rabbi anzini ila yawmi ba'athun Oh Allah let me live until the day of judgment So mm -hmm. if that's the case Shaitan is definitely a Muslim right? So I said this <coughs> belief Has crept into the kids Because when I go to him And I say Akhi, Stop stop, stop, stop you know, uh, sleeping with girls Stop doing zina Stop listening to music Stop raping girls Stop selling drugs Stop doing this Stop doing that He goes to me Bro don't judge me Only God can judge me My iman is on my heart You don't know what's in my heart So I said there you go The belief of the murji I directly became an obstacle Between me and giving this guy da'wah I said I give you another example I said Allah's name is <coughs> al mutakabbi one of Allah's names is Al Mutakabir. Right. Now, Kibr, when it's for Allah, the pride is good. For Allah to be proud is good because Allah, He deserves that. He's got Kibriya, he's got, he's, he's, he's got greatness and highness amongst us. So He has the right to have pride. But if me and you have pride, what do the Prophet say? A person with an atom's weight of pride will not make it into Jannah, right? So now, obviously, we have a group called the Asha'ira, <coughs> okay? They negate Allah Azza wa Jal's names and attributes. They say these names have no meaning in them or they change the meaning to other than what it is. So for them, when you, when you mention names Al Mutakabir, they say, oh, you have to either do tafweed of the name, negate it completely, or you should do ta'wil, which is change the meaning inside of it, right? That's another deviated group, which is from the groups that will enter inside right. of the hellfire, right? So I say, now when I go, when, when I say, when I say, most of the kids on the streets, what is the reason why they're stabbing each other? What's the reason why they're killing each other? Revenge. Re but why, why are they taking revenge? Pride. Mm. Arrogance. Reputation. How's my man chatting to me? You will get violated. Your brethren will tell you, oh, listen, you're going to let my man talk to you like that. You're going to let him violate you like yeah. that. And then he'll go and take revenge. But I'm coming and I'm yeah, that's why you can carry on. Yeah, but but I'm coming and I'm telling the guys, I'm saying, listen, bro, one of Allah's names is Al Mutakabir. Kibr mm -hmm. is only Allah Azza wa Jal's haq. It's not yours. Mm -hmm. But then if he's Ash'ari and the Ash'ari is out there pushing his da'wah, then what happens? The guys are gonna come and tell me, bro, <coughs> what do you mean Kibr is Allah's haq? It's not even Allah's name. Mm -hmm. He's negating Allah Azza wa Jal's attribute. And the same with Allah's name, Ar Rahman. If you deny Allah's sifa, Ar Rahman, that Allah's <coughs> merciful, because they deny, they deny it. So some of them deny even Allah's mercy, right? So if he's. But don't you think that's looking into it a bit too deep? It's not. Like, the it's guy's not. just getting revenge because sure. his friend got killed. Huh? That, is, revenge? That, yeah, like because his friend got killed. Yeah. No, no majority of them is not because yeah, their friend got killed. Yeah, yeah. No, the majority of them is not because their friend got killed. And you know this. Or just because you got violated, no. for example. Yep, yeah, okay, so you got violated. Why? Pride. Mm. Pride. Right, so I'm here sitting. I'm sit here sitting, telling them. I can look that lecture I done in Masjid Quba, the one that went viral and everyone loved. And you know what I'm saying? The one I'm talking about the hellfire. The whole lecture was what? It was about arrogance, and how it's only Allah's haq. And the hellfire 
roast them, toast them, smash them. Okay, so look, them. I'm saying that, that the hadith was about the hellfire taking the arrogant ones. But I'm saying if there's a person who's a, who's 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 a person who's Ash'ari, who's from Ahl Kalam, who's from that deviant group, <coughs> he'll sit there and say everything Imran just said is batil. He's telling you Allah's name is this, Allah's name is that. And that's where the problem uh, comes. Yeah, in, and yeah. I'm saying this is bid'ah. Does that no, make but sense? For example, the guy in this masjid, he's, he's an imam, right? Yeah. And you're again on social media, so why should I take your word over his when he's an imam of a masjid? He's co- in the community. He's a leader in the community. Surely he's, he's more knowledgeable no than you. So no, what? no problem. Don't take my word. I've got, I, I've got yeah. imam from the salaf. No, no. Everything that I mentioned to you is uh-huh. from books of the salaf. So I've got, I've got imams that are greater than me and him combined, and greater than any man. Forget position. Yeah. What comes out of your mouth? You know, and I tell you, like what, I tell you what's what, the evidence I tell you what, I've seen that as a general Muslim, a general yeah. Muslim would trust and take from an imam in the local masjid more than uh, someone else. No, 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 no I don't even think so. I think now, even no, that perception, yeah, yeah. I think should be thrown yeah. out the window because even no, times even like now, yeah. the imams, if you see Subhanallah, the way they're, you know, using the community's money and using the community's trust and all of this sort of stuff, I think that perception should fly. Bro, out it's enough to say that Dina Tokyo put out an article. About women, it being permissible for them to mm. marry uh, non-Muslim men, yeah. and it actually became an issue of khilaf. <laughs> so and, uh, I by the way, it he doesn't matter. Like, yeah, yeah, the, the, the time waiting now, if you're praying and fasting, if you've got a beard or not, you're also, someone. Who's I don't, I don't can, can I just say one point, then I'll pass it on because really if I just, just, what, you said just a lot of points in no, it. because it was a long answer, but this, this is the last point, and then I'm done. Like as in on this particular issue, yeah, and that's that, and that is that. You see me, what I just gave you is a long-winded answer, right? Very which is, which is, which is, which is, and I have to give you that because I talk based on evidence. But you have to understand, these people don't even work based on evidence. They actually work based on numbers. So then basically, all I have to say to the imam is this. I said, if you don't take all of that, which I just said, then it's enough for you to know that we talk about aqidah issues, we talk about theological issues, and we still get the street kids coming. We still, not the street kids, we get the kids who are in the clubs. We get, we get non-practicing kids. They're still coming into the masjid. You get sisters that come out of prison. Huh? We even got sisters that come out of prison coming to these classes. A lot more better. Not just that, I'll tell you something. There was an event that we had done, <coughs> okay? We were reaching out to the non-practicing sisters. And I was informed that in the sister section, yeah. a sister actually came in. This is wrong, but it's actually really nice at the same time. And I'll tell you why it's nice, but it's also clear why it's wrong. She actually came in, apparently dressed very inappropriately. She came in a dress, like as if she was going out partying. So that's bad. But at least she came to the masjid. Mm. That makes us happy. Yeah. She she's showing some inclination towards change. Mashallah. I'm saying, shout out to that sister if she's watching, man. Say that again. Shout out to that sister. Yeah, shout out. Inshallah, and she puts on the hijab inshallah. as well. <laughs> the, as in, from the <laughs> angle of like, you know, <laughs> it, it's, for some sisters, it's very bro, hard to be <laughs> in that state and like grab yourself and take yourself bro, to the masjid. Bro, bro, like, bro, that's bro, very bro, hard. Bro, when we done, when we done that event in Hackney, Akhi, Allah, Shak, my brother actually came out after the talk. He said, Akhi, Allah, it touched me so much. He said, I was actually just about to go do a move. I was about to go move a shot. I wasn't even coming here because my friend. A lot of people don't understand slang in it. He's he gonna go sell drugs. He said he was yeah. gonna go sell drugs. Yeah, he, and he said my friend right here. He told me come to the masjid. He said I came. I listened to what you're saying. He goes I don't want to live this life anymore. He put Whoa. his hand in his trousers. He pulled something out. He said what do I do with it? I said get rid of it immediately. Repent to Allah and leave this life. He went. He disposed. He got rid of it. Alhamdulillah, Rabbi I'm saying, I'm saying, but this is not proof for us. It's proof for them. Yeah. For us, it's te- textual evidence. Allah has said, oh, the Prophet mm-hmm. said. But I'm saying on both levels. On the text, we've got them. And on the yeah. anecdotal, oh, we've got them. Well, so just to add as well, the reason that their topic has to change because, again, com- their thing comes back to numbers. Because once their numbers grow, their numbers influence their topic that they talk about, what's relevant and what's not relevant. So statements like this come out because what you got, they change based on numbers. If the numbers go, their income's going to go. And so, so you, have to, you yeah. have to kind of uh, walk on eggshells. Yeah, Be careful course. what you say, because if you say the wrong thing, of course, people are gonna leave. So they're in the same boat as celebrities that are in Hollywood, because mm. they're in the same boat. On that notion, have you noticed something recently? They've started to come a little bit more knowledge based, because we've been pushing knowledge, 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 books, 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 books. Recently, they started to, they, they, because they never used to do books. They used to say, they, I remember we sat with them and they said, what? Stop reading these books. Why are you not reading I've these seen books? Posters going around. Yeah. Well. And now man, what? Yeah, yeah. We're going to study this book in fiqh. We're going to do this yeah, aqidah yeah, yeah. book. And what do you mean, akhi? What do you mean? Do you know why they're doing it? It's because the people want it now. Because we, you know, the doubt of the Salafis, I had a jamaah got people realizing that knowledge is needed. So they're thinking, oh, we're not pushing out knowledge. So we need to go back on our principles for the last 15, uh, 20 years. First it was all just like yeah. experiments. So or I really have to say something. You know, we said like, 
in terms of like the imams like that perception should be gone like i i don't want people to now think that we're putting the scholars to a side that's not what, what Wait, we're trying what to say you say about yeah, imams yeah, yeah. and uh, yeah. I, yeah. Because I, I said you know that perception of just because he's an imam that you know he like we, we no, but no, the scholars. Even like, there are some imams. No, sah, sah, but who I don't are fully want people to think that we're we're belittling the scholars and stuff like that. No, yeah, I'm saying not like even the scholars. We're not even belittling legit, like legitimate yeah, yeah. imams <coughs> kind of thing. That's completely understandable. Yeah. Um, but I, the other thing that I want to get onto is obviously, okay, course cool. so we mentioned now that Aqidah is going to be taught. We've been teaching it for X amount of years. We're going to keep teaching it, keep studying it. But just to quickly mention Aqidah itself, right? Why is it that we have to go back to? These old books from back in the days when the reality is the situation back then was different. The situation now is different, right? People say that, you know, the problems that we face today are different to the problems we faced back in those times. You know, I've heard people say that, you know, they need to go through some books with tippics and, you know, take out some parts. Or, you know, some books, they should be, you know, put to the side and left alone. Like, why is it that you're going back to the same old books from 1400 years ago? Like, surely there's new issues today, there's new problems, surely we need new books, like Aqidah should develop or, you know, <coughs> change to suit the time and suit the needs of that time and place. Yeah, I think that is totally like... Oh, you think that's a whole different no, topic? I think that's, no, I think that's totally incorrect for people to say that. The reason being... But why? It's, it's rational, it's like... It's, it's I'll tell you why it's rational. Who actually yeah. said that? And who, What's that? Who says that our, that our Aqidah has to change now? Has to develop, yeah. Who said that? It's, it's uh, one of the uh, what did you say? Yeah. Oh, you said his name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You said know, it. we actually making famous now. You don't need to mention Okay, let's bleep it out. Yeah, cut it out. <laughs> but yeah, you said it. In the <laughs> podcast. <laughs> that what? Say it again. So the aqidah, it, 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 it's a developing. The science of aqidah, it develops. Well, it, I it's think not that, the same. You know, you know who, who, who that reminds you <laughs> of? It reminds you of this one <laughs> philosophy teacher I had, yeah? And I'll easily be led. You know what this guy said? He goes, um, <coughs> There's no such thing as the truth. So I said to him, What do you mean there's no such thing as the truth? He said, um, I go to him, okay, cool. Uh, is the sky uh, is the sky blue? He said, yes. <coughs> I said, is the sky also black? He said, yes. I said, okay, so if someone comes and tells you now that the sky is blue, but you saw the sky only when it's dark, does that mean he's wrong? No, it means your perception, you just haven't seen the sky when it's dark. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. So... The point being is that those people that come and say that or oh, aqidah it has to change because of the time. No. What you have to do is you have to look at what the time is now and use the foundation, which is what? The aqidah of the Salaf. Okay. To relate it back to the problems that are going on now. Why? Because the aqidah of the Salaf and that those books that were taught back in those days and writ and so on and so forth, those were all a foundation for even now. So can and you I give me an example? Because I'm giving an example give of how a traditional aqidah based issue is relevant today. To of course. Today's yeah, issues know, or today's one society. second. One second. I've, I, can, I can give you so many examples. Give me one. The examples I already gave you about Allah's names and attributes. Yeah, yeah, if you so teach about Allah's... And I, I can give you more. Like, you know, and so and, and Allah's names and attributes is part of aqidah? Of course of it is. No, I can give you another issue. <coughs> when People probably think I'm like some dumb guy. No, I'm saying the issue of qadr. What's the biggest problem that the atheists have with Allah Azza wa today. It's not even his existence. You know that, right? The biggest argument they bring is the problem of evil. Yeah. So when you look into the books of Qadr that the, that the ulama of Salaf, uh, upon the manhood of Salaf wrote, Allah, you find all the answers to all these questions in there. Ibn Taymiyyah ta'ala's refutation on the philosophers, okay? He sent and f laid down principles for you to be able to deal with these skeptics today. Do you see what I'm saying? If we're going to give an example of each, it's going to go beyond the scope of our discussion. Okay. But the, the, the point of the matter is, it's there. But akhi, forget examples. I'll give you an evidence. For a man to say that aqidah is transforming and evolving, akhi, wallahi, this person, he's very confused. I don't know if we're reading the same book. Because what was one of the last ayat that came down? Allah said, on this day, I have, and it's interesting because when the days of Hajj and this ayah came down on Hajj, Allah said, I have completed, on this day, I have completed your religion for you. <coughs> and I have perfected my favor upon you. And this, which I've completed and I've perfected for you, is the religion I chose for you, which is Al-Islam. Mm. No, but there's still new rulings, right? Mm. I forgot Bitcoin came out. So no, once it, that's the scholars have to once it, 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 that's not aqidah. Mm. That's that's playing games with the people. <laughs> that is playing games with the people's minds because that's not aqidah. That's fiqh. 
Okay, Aqid is something that's codified that's set in stone. It doesn't change. For right. for people said that Imam Shafi, he went back on his own opinions. He changed his opinions. Fiqh. But I think also Fiqh. One, one second. Yeah. No, one second, one second, yeah. one second, one second. Okay, Aqidah, by its very nature, what, 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 what was the root word of Aqidah? Aqid. So, which, what does that mean? To tie a knot. Ratb. To, to tie a knot, to knot something tight. Does mm-hmm. that make sense? The whole nature, reason why it is because it doesn't move, it stays still. It's, it's tied shut. Does that make sense? Fiqh is different now. Fiqh is rulings. Okay, <coughs> there are rulings that Allah Azza wa Jalla set down, which you know are there. They don't change. But then from those rulings, there are principles to be able to deal with new contemporary issues that pop up. For example, Bitcoin. For example, IVF. For example, you know different uh, business transactions. No problem, <coughs> right? But that's fiqh. Remember, you have to divide the religion into two categories. There's usul al-din. Which is the foundations of the religion, then it's Furur ad Din, which is the sub branches of the religion. The sub branches, okay, that's a different story, okay. But the <coughs> aqidah, it never changes. So just briefly, like, what are the Usul ad Din? Just for someone who's never ever known, like, just so if I want to mention it, what are they? How many are they? So, for example, La ilaha Tawheed is, is an Asal. Okay. Tawheed is an Asal, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, following the Prophet's Sunnah is, a, is, so is an Asal, Muhammad Muhammad. right? These are, these are all Muhammad. Usul. These but are things you can't change on. You can't, you cannot change on them, you know. The, the what happens if you do change? You, you're not Muslim Some anymore, of them you come out So remember the bid'ah is of two types There's bid'ah mukaffara And there's bid'ah mufassaka There's the one that's kufar Mukaffara uh-huh. You leave Islam <laughs> That's like the bid'ah of the Shia They left Islam The bid'ah of the Barilis They left Islam Then there's bid'ah Which is mufassaka It's not kufar But It's the foundation of what kufar is Ibn Taymiyyah said Does that make sense? No also you, yeah. yeah Just going back to your Like the main point That actually should be re- reiterated Is that these people They try to use it <coughs> That we shouldn't go into the books of the Salaf because the books of the Salaf don't have the answers, answers to our problems current problems. And I just want to touch on something related to what Imran said about the issue of uh, Qadr. And one, uh, not even just atheists, Muslims suffer with the issue of Qadr from the little level to the highest level. For example, something might happen and, you know, it's the Qadr of Allah that it happened, but... For them to accept it, it's hard. So now when you teach the people about the Qadr from the books of the <laughs> Salaf, now it's solving a lot of their issues. For example, today, uh, we all saw what happened to Makkah. Well, not all of us. We heard about what happened to Makkah. I could easily be like, oh, why this has happened, this, that, this, that, this, that. But alhamdulillah, it was the decree of Allah for this to happen. Obviously, I spent quite a lot of money in a, in a time where money is kind of tight. Do you understand? And... Other people are going through sort of issues like that and they'll be like, <coughs> oh, why is Allah putting me through this? Do you want to know what like, an old lady is saying? Well, oh, basically, it just broke down on like the, the roundabout and it's like doing some mad thing. But alhamdulillah, it's fixed now. Um, yeah, but yeah, just hurt. going back to the... Po- huh? No one got hurt. Alhamdulillah, no one got hurt. No except for the pockets. Huh? Except for the pockets. Uh, yeah, except for the pockets. Okay, but even though the pockets, do yani, <coughs> you get me? Okay. I, I, at the Allah. end of the day, of course, of course. it came from Allah. And it was meant to it was meant to go on this. Mm. It was decreed that yep. it was gonna go on this. Do you understand? And some people they might go through that situation like and one of the main things, one of the main problems, oh Allah doesn't want good for me. Look, everything good that happens in my life, you know, Allah just takes it away from me, or so on and so <coughs> forth. And this is a big issue that happens. Do you understand? And people will look at this issue and their first instinct isn't to relate it back to what? Aqidah. But this is a big issue of aqidah. Do you understand? So not, not just that, I give that's why I feel like I give, I give, I give <laughs> um, just last point, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's why I feel like people really, really just little and belittle and really put the scope of aqidah just into theology, uh, theology and not uh, practice. And there's modern day <coughs> things that we can see from the theological side of things that can be put into practice. Plus, I think what's important is a statement of the self. They, the most aqidah you come across. They say Wali kulli in warith for every nation there's an inheritor. Mm. For every belief. Some people may think, oh you know that that was specific to Ibn Taymiyyah's time and that was specific to this person's time and, and they had to write those books for those people that were uh what do you call it, those topics that were there. <coughs> but it wasn't. For every nation there's someone that's gonna come, he's gonna c- come across those books and he's gonna take that same belief and he's gonna come. And for you, if you didn't study that and you never went over the books, W- what's your response? What are you going to respond to him? What are you going to say to him? And we have that today. You so know? Saying that, that's what people say though, is that these issues of division, mm. as we the names of the Prophet, yeah. Allah, Tawheed, people wouldn't even know about the different views and the different you know, divisions yeah. un- 
it's just because you guys keep bringing it up when you're refuting it yeah. that you're actually teaching people about it. People <sighs> wouldn't even realize if you stop refuting people, yeah, everyone would just you know no one would even know that there was ever a difference. Everyone would just but unite upon one. But what I'm saying is no, that's there's incorrect. people. That, no, no, but that's, that's, that's what that's what no, 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 they're wrong. What, what I'm saying uh, is there's I'll people that have you. taken that belief of those yet, like these books that are being studied of, of Ashari, Maturi, all these names. There's people that hold these beliefs. <laughs> so if you're saying, oh, you know, us bringing up the names and highlighting it is causing division, we, we don't need to start. Okay, so when topics have been discussed, like the brother brought up and certain key points when people are, ne- you know, not, not referring to the names of Allah and his attributes and changing its meanings and stuff like that, you're going to be like, oh, you know what? Yeah, that could be correct. You know, that's actually true. If you never studied, you, know, you never learned about them, and you never learned the character. <coughs> but first, what's important is you need to know your own belief first. Because what's, what's started with is your own belief. You don't learn about other groups and other sects. That's not what started. You have to correct your own self, learn your own, what do Ahl Sunnah believe? And then from the on, you learn about the others and where they went wrong and the next type of But no one's starting and saying, oh, you know what, learn <laughs> about these people before you learn your own belief. And coming back and tying, you know, the importance of Tawheed is, you know, the brother mentioned people have issues with Qadr. Mm. Money falls into it. These people are selling drugs on the street. Yeah. The number one reason is why? I need money. Mm. I need to get money. I, 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 you know, I can't, I can't work a nine to five. Yeah. So I have to make my own ways. Mm. I have to teach myself. Mm. But they don't know. Allah is the one who provides. Allah made the opportunity for you. That your risk was written 50,000 years before. So if the person, his belief is what? Yeah, you know what? Still, I still need to go do haram though. Like, yeah, I, I, I'm not that. His, his trust in Allah is not that strong. His belief that, you know what, the opportunities will arise. So for him, it's like, you know what? Allah never made that option for me, so I have to make a, you know, I have to, myself, yeah, yeah, I have to make an option for myself. So you're going in a means which Allah made haram. You're saying you were forced to go into haram because Allah never made for you an option in halal, which goes against. And, and look how I come back to the issue of Tawheed. Because Allah says, وَمَنْ يَتَوَكُّلْ وَمَنْ يَتَوَكُّلْ Allah فَهُوَ حَسْبُ Anyone who makes Allah his wakil, Allah is sufficient for him. It's enough for him. But here what? But they don't believe Allah's name al wakil Mm. It comes back to La ilaha illallah, Allah's mm. names. Remember, Allah's Tawheed is in His names. <coughs> his, 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 his names are attributes. His Rubi is Uluhiyah. You tell him, oh, Aki. What's a Rubi or Uluhiyah? But you tell him, oh, uh, oh, Aki, you know what? Allah, Aki, just have patience. Wallah, there's going to be a way out for you. Allah says, Yeah, yeah, I've heard it all before, bro. Like, Allah, you know, you tell him, Aki, Allah's going to make a way out for you. Yeah, He's going to find you places will, that you don't even know. He's mm. like, where though? Yeah. Like, like, how? Like my mom's saying this to me <laughs> and, and this is happening and I got this and I got that. Phone bills and this bill X, and y, that bill. And blah, blah. Like how? I know, I know. But you, it's like, he's like, I know, take but. Take there's it. always a but. I know, but. There's always, I know. Like, you know, <laughs> people go through issues of pregnancy or issues of getting married. Yeah. Like, I know, but. Yeah, I don't but it is hard though. Yeah. You can uh, understand course, that it is hard to I go through those things and is, still come out strong. But I'm saying these, these that's what I'm saying. The Prophet said that the believer is not, Allah you know, is always in a win-win situation. Yeah. If good comes his way, he's grateful. And if hardship comes his way, he's patient. And he gets rewarded for both. And the thing is, it, so it, it is difficult, but it makes it easier when your 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 knowledge of Tawheed is there. Because uh, even if you look at a practical example, when you have knowledge of something, it makes the test easier. Do you understand? Uh-huh. You, when you go into an exam, if your knowledge... If you studied for it, revised yeah, for if it. If you studied for it, if you've put the work in, yeah. the exam becomes easier. Your your stress is less. If you if you know how to gain like gains in the gym, you know the knowledge about it. Right, you're not gonna go in a lost. You're gonna know the steps to take and the direction to go in. It's the same with the Dean. If your knowledge is there, then it's gonna enable you. It's gonna be difficult. No one's saying it's gonna be easy, but it just <laughs> makes it that much. It it, it it takes the difficulty, you know, down a bit. Okay, so let's move on to the last point for this one because this is getting quite long now. Can you want to say something on that point? I just want to say one thing very quickly before I start coughing again. Go for it. Which is, um, you mentioned the issue pertaining to um, um, that people say that if we never spoke about these aqidah based issues, would then go nobody away. would never nobody would ever know that there's any problem and stuff like that. I mean, that's the problem. If people don't know, that could be the difference between kufr and iman, between jannah and jahannam. If the people become ignorant of these issues and they don't know, and a person just lives his whole life and no one ever spoke about a smell sifat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the names and attributes of Allah, and he just has his own belief regarding Allah, then that could be a path for him to enter into jahannam. So you have to talk about these issues in order to show people the right path. Does that make sense? 
But just just okay, does and this would be the last point, just building on that though. Like for example, would it not be better, for example, if all, all the Muslims around the world, yeah, all these sects and everyone came together, said, Look, <coughs> all Muslim, let's put aside our differences, you know, let's work let's all work towards a common goal. For example, you know, there's issues going on around the world that you know, never been seen before is oppression against the Muslims, people are getting humiliated, bombed, killed all around the world, Muslims. Let's work together to also this, you know, politically and get active and do all these things and everyone work together, you know, put things to the side. And I remember like one of these guys said on um <coughs> one of these shows that, you know, like he when he went to the to the Sufis, you know, one of them said, you know, if you br- bring the bring the Salafis to us and they'll see that we say Bismillah before we eat, meaning we're from the Sunnah as well, kind of thing. We follow the Sunnah as well, kind of mm-hmm. thing, yeah. So it's like, you know, why can't we just agree why can't we just agree upon that which we agree upon, unite upon that which we agree upon? Well, our differences to the side, you know, we're still brothers in Islam, we're still Muslims, and we've got bigger things to worry about. We've got people getting killed you know to worry funny? about. Isn't that you know a the, bigger uh, concern? You know those guys that say that? They actually don't really want to work with us either way. Like, have you noticed that those guys that say that they don't they they actually don't really want to work with you? Like from an argument. What do you mean point, by that? As in if you look at these Ikhwanis and these deviated sects. They don't want anything to do with the Salafis. But that's because they believe the Salafis is just refuting, refuting, refuting. I don't refuting, think refuting. so, man. Even if, I, I think, because of the fact that, you know, they, I think they secretly understand the fact that what they should be doing. But I think, because, you know, when other factors get stubborn, put into play, doing. yeah. I feel like. like I, let's be you know, real, man. Like, we, yeah. we, we, we know brothers that used to, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like, you know, they change when they started to get attacked in their comments. Like we we mm. we like they from day like <laughs> they they were with us, and you know we <laughs> the day they started getting attacked in the comments, uh. it was like no, and literally it was literally overnight transformation. Do you understand? He's he's right. They do know, mm. but it's just they can't hack it in the comments. You know, <laughs> plus you know is. But let's your, go, your back point, yeah, point, go back to the point. Go back to the point. Would point. it not be better to just put uh, the differences okay. to the side? Okay, I'll give you. Or I'll hold hands. We've seen that already. Where? At the time of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. In Mecca. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. There was killing going on, right? Muslims were being killed, right? Persecuted. Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, killed there, was, in, there was tormented, uh, tortured, tortured the everything. There was, there was um, what do you call it? Gambling was going on. Yep. Zina was going on. Yep. Shirk was going on. Yep. Uh, what do you call it? What I think of some other crimes. Stealing was going on. Yeah. Murder. Murder was going on. Yeah. Murdering little children. Daughters were getting buried. Uh, you know. What, what's your point? Did what? What? What was the pros- what was the Prophet Sallam doing at that time? Did he think to himself, you know what? There's bigger issues that I need to focus on to bring the people together to s- to get us out of uh, this oppression. Maybe to bring our numbers together, or to, you know, to so to get to, yeah. yeah to get some sort of strategy. Hold hand with the but idea worship, but did he ever? He didn't do that. He still called to Tawheed. Maybe he never got the he opportunity to get power. He did. They came to him. Of course he did. They came, came to him. They presented <laughs> it. They gave him money. They said, they said if, 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 if what you want is leadership, we'll give you leadership. You women will give the best of women. I'm, I'm talking to the mic. You're, not, you're, you're doing this. Yeah, bro. You can look at me. It's gone. Yeah, no. I'm just looking at me. Yeah, talk to my <laughs> As in, you're doing this and the mic's here. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah. But so as in directly into it. Oh, okay, yeah. So they, they, they offered. You know, they said, uh, what you, <laughs> you want women, you want leadership, we'll give you that. You know, the Prophet Sallam, you know, so mentioned so that so even though I think the brothers, uh, they mentioned that, I think they en- the if you stick, put the sun in my left, the moon in my right, that's weak. That it's weak, but the meaning is true. But, but, but the no, meaning. but they came to this. Exactly. They, they said, do you want women? We'll, we'll give you the most beautiful women from exactly. Quraysh. <laughs> exactly. Do you want money? We'll make you the richest exactly. man from amongst us. Do you want power? We'll give you power. Exactly. They didn't accept none so of I'm them. saying so even I'm through all of that, you know, w- you could have focused on the murder. You could have focused on the stealing. You could have focused on the, the oppression. You could have fo- At that time, was building the people. Focused on Tawheed. Getting, talking about La ilaha illallah. Focused on that. And then... Sabr and certainty. He got his leadership, became a leader, Medina. He's got his position. So people saying, Oh, you know, we need to put these issues aside and, and let's just unite just so we can um get oppression off the Muslims and stuff like that. I'm telling you it won't work. Because the Yahud the the Yahud they Allah criticizes them for that. Because Allah says Tahsabum Jamiyah that you think from the apparent that they're united but the hearts are all, they're, they're all separated. 
all separate. You think from that. When you see them, like, wow, these men are together, but their hearts are disunited. So is that Allah dispraising them? Or is it's he praising for them? Of course, them? it's a dispraise. That's a bad unity. Of course. Uh, so some, that's not something praise yeah, you know, where you know, just exactly to unite. <coughs> from so just unity can be bad as well? Of course. Akhi, akhi, you can't bring them together, all these different groups, except that they'll all fight each other. Imam Khatib al-Baghdadi, mm. he's got book, uh, a book, book called Al-Farq Bain al-Firq. In there he mentioned <coughs> that one time seven groups of the innovators they came together, the Rafida, the Asha'ira, the uh, Khawarij, they all came together. And each one done takfir on the other one, said, oh, you're a kafir, you're a kafir, I'm a kafir, he's a kafir, oh, kafir. <laughs> yeah, they all done takfir on each other. Mm-hmm. You know why? Because they all have opposing beliefs. <coughs> and we saw that, like, they, they, we've seen them try to do this unity in the UK. Remember there was that event, and then, you know, the H- HT guy, the Ikhwani guy, the uh, Diobandi guy, and, you know, they, they all came together. Yeah, yeah. slightly takfiri guy. And they all came together, they were on stage. And when they started talking about the issue of khilafa, whoa. They were, they were like, yo, 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 let's not talk about this, bro. Because they you got your way, I got my yeah, way, he's got his way. Yeah, like, yeah. You know what? You know the point that you mentioned about the Jews, the y- Yehud, yeah? Mm. Uh, that you see, you you think that their hearts are thinking. Oh, yeah. That yeah. happened with the Ikhwanis, man. Of course. Remember when, I won't mention what, but th- that big situation that happened. They all started turning against him. Because of what? Actually, I'm telling you, man. None of these guys, they actually... And they're, they're not in it for the And they started going to court cases yeah, with each other. Yeah, they're not in it for cases. the... Uh, <gasps> I d- and the I'll tell you something man. else. I want to echo what Stride said. He said, they don't want to They don't want to work with us. Oh, no, they no. don't. Because I'll give you an example. Like, there are certain communities that I'm from where their kids are stabbing each other in my locality. And locally, there are people that could work with us to stop it. They know that they're not able to reach out to these kids. They know we are. <coughs> they know we're from that community, the locality. We've approached them countless times hey, look, we <coughs> want to do something. It's going to be on our heads on a day of judgment. <coughs> and they just turn a blind eye. You know why? Because it's more dangerous to work with us. When you say dangerous, what does that mean to work for with them, us? For them, they actually ha- have a hatred for us. You mean it's that like risky for them? No, there's no risk. What, what risk? They have a hatred for Salafiyah, for Sunnah, for Ahlul Sunnah, for Jama'ah. They there's hate. no risk because if you look at all the points that they're raising, they don't bring numbers. Uh, they're going to take away our numbers. No. Uh, we're gonna bring you numbers. No. That right now, if anything, we're gonna bring you numbers. Mm. If yeah? you take away all the factors, it just comes back down to the fact that these people actually they don't like what's being spoken about. The aqidah, they don't like you it. You know what that is? Mm. I'll be honest with you. To be, it I, hurts I, their hearts. I, I think there's one fundamental, foundational issue that these will have is that they have a person personal issue with. with? Yeah. What's that? We, we Can we please not talk? <laughs> yeah, no names, no names. We don't, no names. We don't talk yeah. about them, but we, okay, we all know that group that <laughs> says we're Salafi, but they're really Hizb and you know they 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 they're a bit tough with people. You, we all know that group, right? Oh, so okay. I'm seeing those guys there. Actually, let's be honest, they did leave people with a sour taste in their mouth, isn't it? But the thing is, what people have done is that they went to the other extreme. But say when the Khawarij came out, saying everyone's a kafir, and the Murja came down the other extreme, saying even the Kufar are Muslims. Do you see? Mm. So extremism breeds extremism. Allah people who went too far that way yeah. no, everyone puts everyone in that same exactly bracket. so for them it's just they just hate Salafi and okay. it's maybe because back when they were in Medina Uni you know maybe some yeah, guy refused them but anyway let's, get, let's not get into that anyway so I think we should wrap it up there that's been a, you know quite an enlightening discussion I think a lot's been taken there's a lot to take in a lot's been learnt uh, Alhamdulillah I think a lot of complex things have been simplified and understood and broken down inshallah um, so yeah I think we'll leave it there for this episode